Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And I'm excited this evening. There's, oh, how can I describe what I feel is coming through? There's this warmth of wisdom that I feel that is just seeping through my body as I start getting into the conversation about what Dr. Susan Shumsky is bringing into tonight's call, into this transmission. Um, and it's something that, I, again, I want to invite you and remind you to listen from your heart and allow your mind to be of service to the heart. We're talking about something that I feel is so important. And we talk about spirituality and ascension and, 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 and getting to higher octaves of our wisdom through this energy that is here to support us and to guide us. And there's an abundance that's available to you that runs the gamut of the energies and the expansion and the ascension, but it's also an innate right. It's also part of that spirituality. And to be in that space, of receiving and giving, the balance of it, and the beautiful exchange that exists within it. It's just, it's, it's a precious, precious gift that as we learn to receive, our capacity to live in that just is felt as an act of service automatically. So it's, I'm so, inspired by tonight's call as Susan talks about manifest an abundant, fulfilling and balanced life. And if you're new to Dr. Shumsky's work, um, she is quite the pioneer. At, let me tell you a little bit about her and we're just gonna dive in and we may open up to Q&A also. Um, but Dr. Susan, Susan Shumsky, excuse me, has dedicated her life to helping people take command of their lives in highly effective, powerful and positive ways. She's the best-selling author of 13 books, and I think she has two more coming out. So it's going to be 15, I believe. You can correct me, Susan, in a second. Published by Simon, Simon & Schuster, Random House, and New Page. She's a pioneer in the human potential field, and she spent nearly 50 years teaching thousands of people meditation, prayer, affirmation, and intuition. Now, Dr. Shumsky is a highly respected spiritual teacher, award-winning author, and founder of divine revelation, a unique field proven technology from contacting the divine presence, hearing and testing the inner voice and receiving clear divine guidance. For 22 years, her mentor was Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who was a guru of the Beatles and of Deepak Chopra. Dr. Shumsky served on Maharishi's personal staff for over seven years. So y'all, you're in good hands. And I hope you stay present throughout the whole call today and really allow yourself to receive, again, the sage wisdom um, and this expansion that we're going to be immersed in today. And it's with that Dr. Shumsky, Susan, that I want to welcome you back to Beyond the Ordinary. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to be here with you today, John. It's just such a pleasure to talk with you. I, I want to dive straight into this because there's so much richness that's available today. Why this topic today? Why did you choose about manifesting an abundant, fulfilling, balanced life? Well, this is a time when everyone in the earth is struggling after the pandemic, wondering what direction to take, wondering, many people really wondering, how am I going to survive? And it's a time when people really have done a lot of self-reflection because they really had a, like a forced meditation almost, uh, having to stay home for so long and so this is a time when we need to reevaluate where are we going what are we doing and what's my true purpose why am i here really why am i here and that really is the most important question for us to answer because if we don't answer that then we can't really focus on manifesting what's highest wisdom for us to manifest I mean, it's all well and good to make a shopping list. Oh, I want this and this and this and this, you know, and I'm going to use the secret to get it. Uh, but using that list is not really going to create 
happiness and fulfillment necessarily in your life, fulfilling all the things on that list, unless you first find out what is highest wisdom for me, what is my purpose, why am I here? If you can discover that first, then you can start to make really a very profound list mm. and start to manifest the things on that new list, which are really, uh, which really will bring to you abundance, happiness, fulfillment, and balance in your life. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because the perspective of abundance shifts also when you get to that place of purpose. It's, exactly. It's it's it, we learn to get out of cultural acceptance of what that's supposed to be and the freedom that we think that we're, having what another has will provide to us, but it becomes a much more intimate, personal journey. Truly, absolutely. So when we look inside and and you know, who am I? Why am I here? These are the fundamentals of life. And then when we, uh, when we get to those fundamentals, then our, de our desires could possibly change. Maybe the thing that we thought we wanted is not really the thing that's going to bring us the greatest fulfillment. So as you said, we start to change. We start to have different priorities. Uh, all of a sudden now maybe, uh, that particular house that we wanted, that particular car that we wanted, maybe even that relationship that we thought we needed, maybe that isn't exactly what is of highest wisdom for me. I always like to communicate with spirit and find out what is highest wisdom for me in this situation. And that's really what I ask of spirit. And those are the kinds of answers that get answered for me from spirit. So the main thing that I teach is about communicating with spirit, learning how to listen to the still small voice within. But along, that's not really what we're talking about today. Uh, although that really is a prerequisite to what we're talking about today, which is manifestation. So in order for us to really manifest that which is for our highest good, it's really wise for us to have start a dialogue with spirit, to communicate with spirit and find out what is wise for me in this situation. I've got a couple of questions I need to ask you around this, but the, the first one, and, and it's a big question for so many people in the audience, over, I've been doing this almost 10 years, Susan, and it still comes over and over and over again. How do I discover my purpose? Ah, okay. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to reveal all of that right now because actually I have a wonderful uh, method, which is called the unlimited thinking exercise, mm. which is a way for us to discover what our true purpose is. And I don't want to really let that cat out of the bag right now, but it is a bona fide way. It's the most powerful and profound way I have found wow. for discovering our life purpose and our mission and what is of highest wisdom for us to accomplish in this lifetime. Hmm. It's well, called the unlimited is, thinking exercise. Limited thinking exercise. It's wonderful. And we're going to go deeper and special offer about what's available to really unblock some of the subconscious obstacles that are in the way. But what is it that gets in the way from this, these, these things that are really going to set us free from this energy and from this, again, awareness of self that really provides the liberation from the shackles that keep us trying to chase things or feeling like we can't quite reach something that we're supposed to. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, a lot of things make a lot of sense when you believe in reincarnation mm -hmm. and I believe in reincarnation. Well, let's start believe, in the midst of that, yes. I believe that we have lived many, many lifetimes and that during those lifetimes, we picked up all kinds of beliefs, habits, conditions, ideas, uh, negative beliefs about ourselves, the belief in punishment, the belief in reward, the belief in uh, we're not good enough, 
not enough, the belief in lack. There's so many beliefs that we have managed to acquire during our many lifetimes that we have uh, lived on this planet or maybe even on other planets. So because of that, we have all kinds of pre preconceived notions and ideas. And probably you're, I'm talking to a very sophisticated audience here. So yes. you all realize that we are creating our own reality, first of all. And second of all, that it's not our conscious mind that's creating our destiny. It is our subconscious mind that's creating our destiny. Now, uh, Buddha said in the very first verse of the first chapter of the Dhammapada, which is arguably the most important Buddhist scripture, he said, all that we are is the result of what we have thought, which I think is really a stunning statement. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. Therefore, we have created this reality through thought stuff, through our thoughts, through our beliefs. And Jesus said, it is done unto you as you believe. But he's not talking about our conscious beliefs. He's talking about our subconscious beliefs, which are guiding us, which are creating our destiny moment by moment, day by day. For example, if you consciously believe that you deserve a Rolls Royce, but if you subconsciously believe that you deserve a Hyundai, which car are you going to get? Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the Rolls Royce because it is our beliefs in what we deserve to have. That's what actually outpictures or appears in our life. So understanding this principle, knowing that we are creating our destiny through our thoughts, but also Buddha said, after he said, all that we are is the result of what we have thought, he went on to say in the next verse, he said, if a person speaks or acts with a pure thought, then happiness follows him or her. If a person speaks or acts with an impure thought, then unhappiness follows him or her. So what he's saying is that not only are we creating our destiny through thoughts, we're also creating it through words, what we speak, and through deeds, through what we do. So thoughts, words, and deeds are creating whatever situation, circumstance you are in right now was created by you either in this lifetime or some past lifetime, according to what you believe you deserve to have. So if you believe that you deserve to be punished, or if you believe that you deserve to be rewarded, or if you believe that you deserve to learn a lesson about something, that's exactly what's going to appear in your life. Hmm. So uh, if, uh, Henry Ford once said, if you believe that you can have a thing, or if you believe that you cannot, you are right. Mm, right. So. Wonderful. It's, this is so resonant for me, Susan. And, and I have to ask you from your experience, how important is it that we're aware that we bring to awareness what's in the subconscious? Or is there things that we can do consciously without the awareness of what the subconscious or bringing it to awareness? to allow us to reframe and to really change the trajectory of the suppression that may keep holding us back from manifesting abundance, relationship, our communication with our guides, whatever it may be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of people wonder, well, how in the world can we change these subconscious beliefs? You know, we may not even be aware that we have them. So the uh, first thing, if possible, is to be, become more aware that what you've created, I mean, you just look at your life and see what you've created. And that is actually your subconscious beliefs. There it is. Wow. It's easy to know what your subconscious beliefs are. Just look at your life. <laughs> there it is. So uh, that's fine. It's dandy. It's wonderful. You've created what you created. And now do you want to change some things? So in order to change some things, I believe the most powerful way to change things is through 
affirmation and meditation. And affirmation is something that really changes things immediately, instantly. Uh, like my book, for example, Instant Healing. I call it Instant Healing. Um, so instant healing means as soon as you say the affirmation, you have a result. Now, if you have an affirmation that says that you have a Mercedes Benz, uh, the Mercedes Benz isn't necessarily going to just magically appear in the dr driveway, driveway the second after you say the affirmation. However, what you'll find is you have an immediate shift from saying the affirmation, you have immediate shift in your awareness that now there is a more positive attitude. And since your attitude and your intention is creating your destiny, that Mercedes Benz is coming closer to you every time you say the affirmation. So affirmation is a way to manifest things in the world, physical things really works and also immediately changes your attitude, immediately shifts your consciousness. That's why affirmation is so powerful. And when I say affirmation, I include in that prayer as well. What we're talking today is not only based upon instant healing, but also miracle prayer. Those are the- Beautiful. And I want to get more into the concept of prayer, but I was having this conversation with someone a few days ago and it's it's the interpretation, the dogmatic interpretation of understanding of prayer. It's it's so limiting to the power that it actually invokes, and we've we've kind of stupefied it a little bit in our culture right now, and, and tend to bypass it. But it's so important. But to get on affirmations first, there's neuroscience behind affirmation. It helps to re-entrain the brain. You actually form new neural pathways. And you override and you stop the peptides from going into the well of the limiting belief, you dam it up and you actually form new neurological connections, which actually support the affirmations. So to be in the practice of the affirmation in that way is huge to choose. Again, science is demonstrating this. They're confirming, the, they're affirming the affirmations, obviously. Yes, and actually, even there has been scientific studies done on prayer as well, by the way, uh, that proves that prayer works, you know, but um, when I say prayer, um, there's all kinds of, that's a big word, which yeah. different people have different definitions of what that is. The reality is that every thought that you think is a prayer. Mm. Every word that you say is a prayer. Every deed that you do is a prayer because it is it is what manifests it is what out pictures in your life so uh, as you're saying the repetition is very important and creating these new neural pathways repetition of the affirmation it works i mean if you continue to use affirmation use prayer prayer is just another format of affirmation or or another kind of affirmation it's all affirmation so uh speaking using the power of speech jesus once said something very interesting he said we are not defiled by what we put into our mouth we are defiled by what comes out of our mouth mm. oh i love that that's so beautiful mm. it's funny it's and i love this question marissa so i'm glad you're asking and marissa writes when you speak of prayer does the prayer have to be said out loud Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. Yeah. If you want to manifest things in the outer world, if you want things to actually come to pass physically, it's best to speak audibly and speak with conviction. And every time you say an affirmation or you speak a prayer, uh, pretend as though your higher self is speaking through you. Not your ego self speaking, but your higher self saying that affirmation through you with great power. I'll give you an example. I am in control. I am the only authority in my life. I am divinely protected by the light of my being. 
I close off my aura and body of light to the lower astral levels of mind, and I open to the spiritual world. Thank you, God, and so it is. Oh, that's powerful. When you speak with power like that, and that particular affirmation, by the way, can change your life very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. When you speak without power, when you speak affirmative prayer or you speak affirmations like that, as though your higher self is saying it through you, it's not rocket science, by the way, don't get all cut up. Uh, oh, what do you mean? Say it through me. Just pretend, pretend as if your higher self is saying it through you. It's that simple. That's wonderful. I love the invocation also. And, and, and it brings up the energies of the astral realm. So I'd love it if you speak more into that because there's our connecting into guidance and connecting into benevolence. And there's a connection into distortion based on the different realms of that. It's that really don't support where we're trying to go in our purpose that then creates yeah. that abundance. So I'd love it if you give us a little bit of dialogue and your awareness around that as well. Right. So there's four basic places that messages come from or that we can tap into to receive guidance, whatever you wanna call it, receive inspiration, receive healing, receive guidance. There's four different planes of existence. One is the spiritual world. Then there's the mental world. Then there's the astral world. And then there's the environmental world. So the spiritual world, that's the realm of God, goddess, realm of angelic realm, realm of divine beings, realm of beings who uh, passed over and went into the light after death. So our departed loved ones, for example, are in that realm. It's a heavenly realm. It's the realm of heaven. You know, that's what the spiritual realm is. That's where the, all the deities and divine beings and beings of light are there. So that, those, that's who we want to communicate with. We want to communicate with the divine beings who are in the realm of truth. That's where truth is. That's where a wholeness and happiness and joy and fulfillment. That's in that realm, the spiritual realm. However, there are many people who claim to be psychic or who want to be psychic or who uh, are channelers or tapping into something. There, there's many who are not tapping into that spiritual realm. Not everyone who claims to do that is really doing that. Some are, some aren't, okay? So there is also the mental world. The mental world is just basically our, what I call our BS, our belief systems, mm -hmm. our old habits, uh, beliefs, the things that we've been brainwashed to believe since birth, things that we've brought over from past lives. That's the mental world. And that mental world is, is actually it's an internal world. It's a world of belief, a world of things that we, have, that we have come to establish as our mental law, what I call the mental law, which is our own internal laws by which we operate, you see? So that's uh, the mental world. So by tapping into that mental world, we're really just talking to ourselves. That's, that's all it is. And then there's the astral world. And the astral world is kind of a uh, place, you might call it limbo. It's a place where souls go to after death who did not go into the light. A soul who has not go into, gone into that divine light. Um, everyone here who's listening knows, already knows about the near-death experience and that we go, uh, the people who have had the near-death experience have gone into a beautiful light they saw a divine being usually maybe their relatives are there ushering them into the light so this divine light uh, is the spiritual realm and some beings for one reason or another don't go into that light i actually have counted 15 reasons why beings don't go into the light after death wow. and these beings get stuck or stranded in this place that I call the astral realm. That's just semantics. I happen to call it that. Other people might define the astral realm as something completely different. 
But that's the way I describe uh, the astral realm, which is this realm It's real. It's not a fantasy. It exists. And there are beings who are there, beings who are lost and confused, who didn't go into the light, and also beings who are, may be mischievous or may be malevolent, beings who maybe never even had a human body are in the astral world as well. So that's not, not a place we want to get involved with. That's not a place that we want to uh, get messages from. It's a place that we might, might want to heal, though. It's a place where we can do a lot of good if we say some healing prayers. And then there's the fourth. So we talked about spiritual world, mental world, astral world. And then the fourth one is what we call the environment. So that's basically just the consciousness of, of humanity, the consciousness of people around us, our peers, uh, but not just our peers, our family, our friends, but all of humanity, collective consciousness, the beliefs of humanity. Some of those beliefs might be uh, women are more sensitive than men, women are inferior to men, uh, just all kinds of beliefs. I mean, you can name a long list of them. And uh, that's the beliefs that are running the earth, basically. So those are the places that we can tap into internally and get messages from those places. So it's important that we learn how to distinguish and discern between that true voice of spirit that true divine voice and other voices in our mind that are not the real voice of god yeah and with those real voices of god or, or the ones that are not really that's coming in are there layers of things that we can do that we can process through or work with so that we're not mixing energy with that is there is there like protection mechanisms that and practices that we can do is there are things that we can stay in a vibrational state so that it's not even a question if we're dipping our energy down there or if we do that we become very quickly aware that we have actually that little uh, affirmation that i spoke previously uh, will immediately bring you into a state of centeredness and balance and uh, immediately if you feel that you are off in some way, that affirmation, which I often refer to as the self-authority affirmation, mm -hmm. can bring you right back into balance. It's very powerful. And so what has shifted for you, Susan? Again, you've, you're such an expert. You're so versed. I'm, again, 13 books and this, the years of 20. study. 20. Oh. 20 books, actually. You read an old bio there, I guess. That is 20 an old books bio. in English and 36 foreign editions. Wow. There's so I've won 43 book awards. <laughs> That's wow. Wow. It's, we're in good hands tonight, everybody. <laughs> I mean, truly. Well, those are my um, bragging rights. <laughs> That's the end of my bragging right there. How do you maintain so prolific and, and the abundance of that wisdom flowing through you? And for, for me, I have to tell you, and, and this quote's been coming up for me over the last couple of weeks, several times, it's, and it's the person who knows their why can overcome anyhow. And again, we talked about purpose earlier, but what is it that motivates you and how is it that you're in this, in this state of this flow of this abundance that, that keeps you um, on your passion and on your purpose? Because obviously this is your dharma. It's just, it's so obvious, <laughs> truly. Yeah, so, you know, I just have a love of God, I think. Mm. I just have the experience of God. You know, Vivekananda said, what right do you have uh, to say you believe in God? If you haven't experienced God directly, mm. it's better to be uh, an atheist than an, uh, than an outspoken atheist than a hypocrite. Uh, he said that what he's saying is that we, uh, if there's a God, we must see him. If there's a soul, we must perceive it. That's what, what he said. And uh, I, I agree with Vivekananda on that score. 
the direct experience is the most important thing. And if you have not had that di direct experience, why not just be an atheist and be more honest, you know? If you're just going on blind faith and never having the experience. Yeah. And by the way, George Harrison used to quote that. All he quoted it so much that people actually attribute that quote to George Harrison rather than Vivekananda. <laughs> Amazing. And well, that's ringing so true in my heart also. And it, and it's shifting something in, in my religious upbringing and the why and, and again, the different communities that I've been involved in. And it's just, it's just that Susan. And again, I've been doing this for years, just that is melting. Again, a limiting belief and perspective in an environmental conditioning. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't serve. It's and and it takes away judgments also. There's like a deeper understanding and compassion mm -hmm. for the ignorance of the plight of this, of this human existence, but how beautiful the invitation of the wisdom of it as well. Yeah. Wow. Vivekananda, we can thank him for that. He was the disciple of Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna was the real, the real deal. He was the, the guru of Vivekananda. So let's get into some of the subconscious bacteria the viruses that run that, that really that really prevents us from getting yeah. into this place of yeah. receiving abundance and again there's there's being in servitude there's you can't be spiritual if you yeah. if you're abundant there's all Bingo. these things uh, that Bingo. can occur. Yeah, it's uh, talk more about that for us. Yeah, please. we've been brainwashed for so long and so many lifetimes to believe that spiritual people uh, can't be abundant and abundant people can't be spiritual. <laughs> uh, this whole idea of it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to reach the kingdom of heaven. The whole idea of uh, blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth, you know, blessed are the poor. All of this, we've been taught that it is highly unspiritual to have abundance, to have money specifically. The trouble is that money goes where it's invited and it stays where it's well treated. That's the reality. So if we hate money, if we push money away, if we believe that it's bad and evil, if we believe that it's going to ruin our life, we certainly won't attract it. Right. So, you know, an affirmation such as I love money and lo money loves me. I love money and money loves me. It comes to me often and stays with me always. Mm. That's a good affirmation. If you want to change your attitude about money. So, you know, look internally, you know, what do you believe about money? Are you pushing money away because you believe that it is the root of all evil, as it says in the Bible, out of the mouth of Jesus, supposedly, which is basically, I think, mistranslated. In a... I would agree, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, the thing is that when, when Jesus was teaching, he taught individuals. When he was speaking to someone, he was speaking to an individual. When he sp spoke to that one person and asked him to, to follow him, you know, there's a story around this quote, you know, the quote about the camel, the eye of the needle. There's a story. There was a man. He wanted Jesus. He wanted to follow Jesus. He wanted to become his disciple. And Jesus told that man to give away all of his money. And the man said, oh, I'm not doing that. So Jesus said, well, you know, if you don't do what I say and come with me and be my disciple, you're not going to be going to the kingdom of heaven. So he was talking to a person. He wasn't talking to everyone and saying that everyone has to give all their money away and follow him. He was talking to a person who was going to become a renunciate, which is, you know, that is a a traditional way of, for a person to follow a guru, mm -hmm. you know, and Jesus was a guru and he was gaining disciples, specifically 12 disciples who were his close disciples who were just basically celibate monks. Mm -hmm. And they gave up all their worldly goods to follow him. 
Right. That doesn't mean everybody should do that. He was talking to a person. That's what people don't understand about Jesus. They just apply everything that came out of his mouth to everyone. Well, and and I love that we're starting to understand in a new light and still just the weight of the conditioning that is embedded in our subconscious around that belief. We are carrying generational beliefs in our cellular memories that are creating our lives right now. That's right. That's and so right. We, can, we can mentally, we can mentally say, well, that makes sense. Well, of course, and that's what they meant, but there's still something else running the show. Exactly. The subconscious is running our show. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the actor on the stage. We're the director. We wrote the script and it's all, subconscious basically so susan would you say if we wanted to see like where we're like we really want to expand whether we want the abundance to come in through our communication to spirit through money through personal relationship if we take an inventory of our life as to what our life looks like right now and where we see scarcity and where we might see abundance it's not just a question of saying an affirmation a few times and waiting for something to come in. I think there's a devotion and a dedication that comes into play as well. Right. Now, affirmation is not the only thing to do if you're going to manifest things in your life. <laughs> so um, what you believe, what you think about, what you intend is what creates momentum for things to manifest in your life. So whatever you focus attention on grows stronger in your life. So focus attention on means not only saying affirmations, it also means putting uh, one foot in front of the other and making it happen. <laughs> yeah. So I've always, ever since I was a child, I've always, my method of manifestation has always been, number one, make a decision make an absolute decision that is uh, irretractable, an absolute decision that you will not take back. Make a decision on whatever it is you want to, you're going to manifest. Mm -hmm. And then doggedly pursue it and persist and re have resolve and determination until you manifest it. Yeah. That's the way I've lived my life. I don't know that it's necessarily the way that everybody lives their life, but that's the way I do. I just make decisions and make those decisions uh, convictions, not just an idea, but yeah. an absolute firm decision, a conviction. I call it a conviction. I love and then make it happen. I love this because this actually takes me into your example of the quote from Jesus about the sermon about the eye of the needle talking to an individual person. Th this person wasn't willing to give up his comforts and devote to what he was saying he really wanted. Exactly. And so by it, it, he was choosing the confusion, he was choosing, but something's calling me. I don't know how to get there, how to get there. He has the answer, but he's like, no, I'm going to kind of stay where I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, eh, it's, a, it's, I'm comfortable over here. I've built up this nest egg, whether it's money, relationship, a house you live in, the comfort of having familiar things or whatever it is. It's like, eh, I'll, I'll be okay in the struggle because I'm not willing to renunciate this for what I'm saying that it is that I truly want. Right. So it's really an initiation as well. That was so powerful. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's such a fantastic insight about that quote from Jesus. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's just, it's just, oh, it's just what you're talking about. It's just lighting up all these awarenesses in me. And again, it's, it's, it's working with my subconscious in new ways where I can take yeah. what I've learned in this, in this searching and, and, and looking for the abundance in different ways in my life. And that wisdom that we've garnered along the way up to this point, it's like, oh, hold on a second. This is igniting something that is bringing up to consciousness that which was buried before. And I love that about your work because you stimulate that. It's like, oh, wait, something different is available. There's another trigger there that I can 
I can go behind that door and open it and illumination is going to bring through a freedom, a release yeah. of something that wants to be created within me. So it's so beautiful. Absolutely. You do this consistently, Susan. Every time it's like, oh my God, this is so amazing. What I want to do, Susan, right now, I want to give ample time and maybe we'll open up to Q&A also if you're, if you're up for it. Oh, but sure. I want, to, I want to go into your special offer and I really want to go into it, kind of talk about each one of the modules as a little topic of conversation also because there's such depth to the power of what you're sharing in the special offer um, that I'd love our audience to benefit from it. So everybody, I'm telling you, this is gonna be a little mini course just by following the special offer page. And of course, <laughs> go deeper into it. Uh, the link for that page is in the chat box. So open up the chat box, click on the link. If you can't find it, just open up a new browser. You'll still be able to hear us and go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Susan 28, and it'll take you to that same page. And Susan, you you dropping us right into um, life guidance is everyday practices to manifest an abundant, fulfilling, and balanced life. But this isn't cookie cutter kind of cotton candy. This is what you do, law of attraction type of thing. This is really profound, Susan. Did, Tell us what you put together and what people are going to be receiving. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, we've just been talking about how uh, our subconscious beliefs have really uh, made uh, money something that is, is not desirable to us as spiritual people. And pushing it away doesn't bring it into our being. So... Uh, what we're going to do through this offer is to help people to overcome the resistances, the beliefs, the habits, the conditions uh, from all those four levels that we talked about, or, or the three levels, you know, there's the spiritual, mental, uh, astral, and environmental. So in order for us to break free of these old beliefs and habits and ideas, we need to be able to connect with the spiritual world and we need to be able to heal the things that are in those other realms the mental the astral and the environmental realms we need to heal those in order to attract an abundant fulfilling and happy life not just money not just this is just about money this is about fulfillment this is about happiness this is about health it's about relationships it's about fulfillment. It's about career. It's about uh, children, family, on all levels of life to be abundant, to attract a happy life. So, yeah, so we have, for example, uh, item one, a miracle prayer, the law of attraction in action. Uh, we talked briefly about prayer, but there's a specific kind of prayer through which we can manifest uh, our dreams and desires according to our true purpose. And this uh, is an introduction to that. This is a workshop, which is a, a video. And then the next video is called uh, Prosperity Meditations. And that one is uh, everyday practices to create an abundant life. So uh, in this, uh, in this, you will. Uh, actually be practicing affirmations uh, it's a, a wonderful workshop that i taught in, in a video where wow. you'll be practicing affirmations and meditations with me to attract abundance into your life on all levels then the next one is transform your life through spiritual healing and self-protection this is also a video where you will be practicing specific uh affirmations with me that will heal your subconscious mind hmm. where you will change your mind and get instant healing from that then we have healing the astral plane we talked about the astral plane before so this is going to go into depth about the astral plane and the beings who dwell there and how to heal that in our energy field and how to heal these beings and then the next one, does it drain you to be empathic? This is a wonderful, another wonderful video. These are all videos that I've been talking about, which are workshops that I've taught actually. 
So this one is about people who are, those of us who are what I call energy sponge. An energy sponge is a person who absorbs energy as a sponge absorbs water. So how do we overcome this energy drain and how do we come back to center? How, how do we become strong again and have power, inner power? So this um, is another wonderful video, but then it goes on. There's more. There's a set of four teleseminars, which are keys to spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. And part one is healing the psychic sponge syndrome that I just referred to. Yeah. This is an audio. These are audio teleseminars, four teleseminars. Healing the psychic sponge syndrome is the first one. Healing astral entities is the second one. Healing wow. psychic vampires, bonds, and karmic ties is the next one. And then the last one, healing negative thoughts and emotions. So it goes into great depth on how we can change our beliefs and habits and ideas from the past and create a whole new perspective in our life. And, and that is really the only way that I know of for us to change our life is to change. We have to change thoughts. We have to change our thoughts first in order to change our life mm -hmm. because all that we are is the result of what we have thought. Then we have 35 spiritual healing prayers, which is a beautiful uh, audio that not only does it have the prayers in it, but it has a wonderful musical background. Then we have an introduction to affirmative prayer which is an introduction to the scientific prayer method. Uh, it's an audio. And then we have the entire book. We have an entire audio book, this huge audio book, Miracle Prayer, Nine Steps to Creating Prayers that Get Results, an entire audio book. And, uh, and in that book, you're going to uh, practice what I call the unlimited thinking exercise, by which you are going to discover your true purpose and destiny. And um, on one of the videos, uh, that unlimited thinking exercise is also on one of the videos. But this one goes into more depth in the in the audio book here, Miracle Prayer. So all of these add up to a whopping value of three over three thousand dollars. But you get get it for ninety seven dollars. Talk about abundance. I mean, really talk about abundance and, and y'all these courses, it's again, what gets ignited in this. And if you look at some of the methods and what Susan's come up with, and again, the, the miracle purge, you talk about, you know, these methods have been used in unity prayer tower and in, in unity church centers and spiritual living people like Ralph Waldo Emerson were contemporary advocates of this Napoleon Hill, Louise Hay, when Wayne Dyer and look at the wisdom that, that that engendered through those movements and so learning the principles of scientific prayer and experiencing the powerful prayer prosperity meditation and susan this takes me into the experience the quote again if you haven't experienced god how can you believe in them to right. experience the power of prosperity some people maybe haven't even truly experienced it in certain ways but to have a living experience, a living energy growing through you really opens up the channels of what's available to be received as well. So this is huge. Well, those of us who are spiritual people, who have the best interests of humanity in mind, who have an idealistic vision for the world, who want to make a better world, those of us who really are positive, attempting to change the world into something greater, something more spiritual, something more uh, egalitarian, uh, human kindness, civil rights, all the things that we espouse that we want to create in the world. Wouldn't it be better for those of us who are spiritually inclined like that and who want to change the world? Wouldn't it be better if we had more resources at our command? Right. If we had, were, had more abundance at our command if we were wealthy just imagine what we could do just think about that the influence is the influence would change paradigms would change the world without a doubt it's so fascinating um and then in prosperity meditations and, and i wanted to get into the bullet points with right. the, for everybody do. on do. the call because susan's in the second module prosperity meditations 
It's uncovering and precisely define your divine plan and purpose. And, and such as that, then you make a concrete plan. So it's one thing, oh, this is me, and you discover more of who you are, then what? And a lot of us get stuck in that in different ways, or th there's a smoother passage through it, and Susan's really giving you a blueprint, if you will, making a concrete plan with goals and milestones, practice methods that increase self-worth, and then experiencing, again, the powerful guided prosperity meditation to attract wealth, and then using the affirmations as a tool, as an ally to create what it is that you want. It's like, again, this is just the second module alone. Um, th this is why this is worth over, you know, as a value of over $3,000 or more. Um, item three, transforming your life through spiritual healing and self-protection. That you'll never forget the demonstration of the power of, your, of the speech and how it, it illuminates through using your muscle. To, it, again, this is just... This is so amazing what Oh yeah, that has a, that has a fantastic demonstration of the power of words. Uh, where I do a demonstration of what happens uh, to a person's aura and right. also what happens to their strength or weakness through using muscle testing and also using an L-rod just to right. see the demonstration. You'll never forget the demonstration that's in that video. It's so powerful, so amazing. And then we'll see exactly how we're creating our destiny and our reality. Mm -hmm. uh, physical demonstration there. It's really powerful. Yeah. And then in healing the astral plane, y'all. And again, I'm sharing this as, a, as an impetus. Yes, I want you to go deeper into the special offering and go, Susan, again, for this price, it makes sense to $97, a two payment option. Y'all, this is something they keep referring back to and just keep augmenting where you're where your field is, what's available to you, your connection to your guides. But again, healing the astral plane, like heal yourself and your environment through the power of speech. Uh, you'll get your self-authority affirmation, become more powerful and centered and not a psychic sponge. Um, the prayer of protection and develop a spiritual self-defense and experience in divine presence, divine light visualization, white fire affirmation, thought form healing, astral entity healing, golden substance healing. I mean, this is psychic tie cut healing and facade body healing. It's just, it's, this is powerful. Um, does it drain you to be empathic? Y'all, I don't even have to read this. Every, it's like we can all, no matter how or where is an empath we are, whatever tools that we can, that we can use to remind us. And again, Susan takes us into, into awakening the root chakra and and getting into that stable foundation but any tools that we can use to remind us to uplift us to keep us in the balance and the harmony of what's available from the higher form of the empath not the one that thinks they have to keep protecting themselves in order to just survive it's huge uh the keys to spiritual healing and you know what exactly are you healing when you're using these healing affirmations and your why why and we get into the subconscious as susan gets into the subconscious and again i'm just through the first six modules there's the the teleseminars the healing the psychic sponge syndrome the healing the astral entities the psychic vampires bonds and karmic ties susan this is huge and we've gotten away from that conversation it's time to come back to it um healing the negative thoughts and emotions and the 35 spiritual healing prayers and that's you know this is jam-packed and full on, and I wanted to give you some bullet points, even if you don't go into the special offer, which I hope that you do, that you're aware that this reminds you that this provides a spark of inspiration so that they ignite you back into your self-authority, your self-love, and back into not just remembering your purpose, but being your purpose in action. That's where it's all at. So this is beautiful. The link is in the chat box. Click on it. The checkout link is super easy. It'll take you 30 seconds to check out of even that. And you'll start getting the downloads and start benefiting from this work. So I hope you take advantage of it. Again, the link's in the chat box or go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Susan 28. Susan, this is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you for this. Um, 
I'd love to open up the platform for some Q&A. Are you up to taking some questions? Absolutely. Right All right, let's do it. If y'all want to ask questions, um, just raise your hand in the chat box. You'll find the little raise hand icon at the bottom of the screen. At least that's where it is on mine. Um, and I'm going to start promoting some of you all to panelists right now. So we'll get into this here. And okay, I'm not doing any readings. Don't ask me about the future. No readings. Yeah. And it's Any questions you have, I'm more than happy to answer. I love that. And we'll redirect it if something comes in. Um, Richard, Ryan, we have some people coming in with each other. Okay, helping each other. Let's start here. Linda, you're the first one to pop in. Let's get you to unmute. And what's your Hi, question? Hi, dear Susan. How are you? I'm great, um, Linda. My prayer, or my ask, my question is, what prayer would you use so that you would have a personal experience with God? Hmm. I am that I am. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So say it out loud. And you could go on with that further. I am oneness. I am wholeness. I am the truth of being. I am the light of God's love. I am perfection everywhere now. I am perfection here now. Thank you, God. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Linda, do me a favor. Will you, will you say the affirmation, I am that I am? I am that I am. How does that feel to you? Oh, it always feels great. I've done that before, but um, I guess I'm, I'm holding myself back, John, and I know that. Just say the affirmation, pretend as though it's your higher self saying it through you. Just do that right now. Just pretend that your higher self is saying it through you. That's all. I am that I am. Yeah, it felt, I felt more energy. Exactly. The feeling of energy is the, is the experience of God. You just experienced God. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you, John. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Linda, what is that programming that causes us to doubt when we remember? Because we we know everyone on this call, so we know, but then there's there's this doubt that creeps in, or we're not doing it right, or or the environment gets in the way, if you will. It's like it's it's crazy. I think we feel unworthy, John. And sometimes our unworthiness stops the flow. Am I right, Susan? Yes, you're right. You have we we need to remember that God is everywhere. God is everywhere present. Hmm. God is everywhere. And are you somewhere? Yes. <laughs> You're somewhere, right? If yes. God is everywhere, and if you are somewhere, then you must be where God is. Yes. God you is can never everywhere, be separated, meaning like God that. is within you and all around you and within and all around everything and everyone. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Thank you. So Linda, do another, you another affirmation would be, I am God. I am God. Okay. Got it. So Linda, with this awareness, will you do me a favor again for the benefit of all of us? Will you say out loud from your higher self perspective, I am that I am? Will you repeat it? Yes, I will. I am that I am. Ah, uh, see, so how beautiful. I feel your I feel your authority, but it's so soft and it's authority, which is powerful. It's just the true essence. There's no efforting in your awareness of it. And I, it's, I want it. Thank you. It's such a gift to feel that from you. Thank you very much. Both of you. I agree with what have Jonathan a, said. It's very beautiful. Oh my have God. a great night. Thank you so Good. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go to our next caller. Peggy, welcome to the call. If you can unmute yourself, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi there. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Peggy. Um, Hi there. I have a question for you, John, real quick. Is there a way that you could print out um, or can we have a copy of the affirmation of authority? You will receive a replay of this call later this evening. Come back and listen to it and you come back and transcribe it um, and you'll have it on there. So definitely come back to the replay. And if, if April can okay. find it somewhere and, and translate it, um, we'll put it in the 
the replay page when we send out the email. Okay, that would be absolutely perfect. <clears throat> okay, Susan, uh, to you, I would like to know if you could come up with some sort of an affirmation for um, just rescripting health, ideas of health. I am health. My mind, my body, and my being are filled with robust health and well being. Divine health fills and surrounds me now. God is the one healing presence and healing power at work in the universe and in my life. And I am perfect health. Thank you, God, and so it is. And so it is, okay. Mm. Thank you for that. That went right through me. Beautiful, Peggy. And come back and listen to the replay to this as well. Yeah. And invoke it, speak it, put it into creation season. I love to speak of the great artist and, and think of Picasso, had he kept all his visions in his mind and not put it onto the canvas, what we would have missed yeah. the world through that creation. And the same is true of our spoken word and our intention to put that creation onto the canvas of the 3D world is such a gift for everybody else to witness. Right, absolutely. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much. That felt really good, thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Mm -hmm. Oh, funny, Lori writes in here, I just realized the book I bought, Third Eye Meditations, was written by Susan Shumsky. Wow, so well <laughs> written and powerful. Uh, I love the synchronicities of that, of course, of course. Um, now, Susan, someone's asking how long the video courses are in the special offer. The videos are usually an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half. Okay, there you go. And again, the link for the special offer, y'all, is at the, in the chat box. April will pop it in there again. Um, and would love to know if we have lifetime access to the courses. I believe everybody gets to download them and keep them under computer library. Is that correct, Susan? Uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so there you go, Karen. It's it's yours. It's yours for the taking, um, and to keep practicing and to go in deeper with it. So it's wonderful. Um, all right, let's go now to Sarah. Sarah, welcome to the call. I see you're out biking, but it's great to have you on here live. Um, I am usually I am usually biking when your show is on. When I get promoted <laughs> to panelist, I have to stop and let you know that I'm here by being on camera and not riding a bike, which would be dangerous. Um, I taught at a very religious holiday last um, weekend and I was teaching a lot about energy medicine and um, a couple of people said, I don't believe it. And I said, but do you pray? And they said, yes. And I said, well, that's energy healing and quoted some of the studies. Okay, here's my question. I have been hired to take a group of 20 couples to Israel as their rabbinic educator at the end of the month. And from one of my bike rides where um, they hit me and my head shattered the windshield, I have needed so much sleep since then. And so I started wondering if I could even do this trip because we're leaving in the middle of the night and then late nights and early mornings. And um, because I need so much sleep and don't feel well. So here's the thing. I decided I want to feel fine. And I was feeling lousy today because I don't know, there's a lot of um, terror. I'm an empath, I'm soaking stuff up. I've had a lot of terror this week and I haven't shook, shaken it. So my body's been impacted. So what, I've, I said some of your um, affirmations out loud. And I've decided that I'm gonna feel great on this trip, even though I'm by far the oldest, that I'm gonna feel vigorous and the heat's not gonna bother me and I'm gonna feel great. And since I said that, I do feel better. But would you like, would you please give me any information 
um, or an affirmation for that. And I also want to add that I was on a call with someone earlier in the week and I was asking why, you know, my clairs haven't opened up. And I've been told a few times, you know, it's like you're clogged up by your brain. You've got everything else going. Um, and I was told that I wasn't hooked up to the divine and that that's why I was so terrified on Monday and having such a hard time and having anxiety attacks. Are we all connected to the divine and what affirmation would you suggest? And John, thank you for calling on me. All right. Thank you, Sarah. You are, everyone is automatically connected to the divine. Uh, I'm going to have to put the only hand. thing that makes us think that we're not is our own beliefs, our own BS, our belief systems that make us think, think that we are not connected. We are absolutely always connected to spirit, 24 seven, 365. That's the reality, that's the truth. So uh, what I'd like you to do uh, on your, during your trip, I'd like you to do brain gym. Brain gym is going to energize you during this trip. So uh, brain gym are just a few really simple exercises and they are taught in the beginnings of almost of probably every one of those videos that are in this offer in this package. Brain gym is the first thing that we do on every one of those videos. And if you don't want to buy the offer, then just find brain gym and, and do, the, do the exercises. I want you to do brain gym exercises Whenever you feel drained, whenever you feel that you're, that you're lacking of energy, you will immediately be energized by doing those simple, simple movements, those simple brain gym exercises. And then of course, the self-authority affirmation that I taught earlier during this call. I love the self-authority affirmation. That's profound. And it's, again, for so many of us who are empathic and so I'm sure you can relate and, and it's, very open, if you will, psychically to get back into our authority and to call in the highest of beings and to do it as a practice. And as empathic as some of us are, don't do it when something bad, when you're feeling distorted in some way, really use it as a cleansing, as a hygienic tool, if you will, on a daily basis. You're already aware that you're open keep it clean like you'd brush your teeth and keep them clean keep the caddies away keep the astral plane away <laughs> it's like exactly it's, i mean really it's that's it seems silly but it's not and your vitality your mental health the abundance the fulfillment your access to your purpose will benefit tremendously from this devotion and commitment to yourself yeah we're so busy susan so many us they call it self-care this yeah. is a form of self-care, affirmation, meditation, brain gym. These are things, these are self-care. These are things that are, are needed for our, our well-being. And so I, I definitely recommend, Sarah, that you learn how to do the simple brain gym exercises and do them during your trip and uh, memorize that affirmation. I am in control. I'm the only authority and so on. That fab fabulous self-authority affirmation and uh, you'll feel more energized. I mean, I did brain gym before we began this call tonight, for example. I did the brain gym first because I knew that if I did the brain gym before I did the call, I would be feeling very centered, very calm, very collected, but also tremendously energized. Brain gym energizes you very, very quickly. So that's why I do it. Uh, every time I teach a class, I always have everyone do brain gym first. Mm, wonderful. Well, there you go, Sarah. Thank you so much for calling in and blessings on your trip. All right, Susan, we have a question that came in from Marissa. Oh, beautiful question, Marissa. Marissa wants to know, can we make affirmations on behalf of our children? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can pray for your children. You can just, uh, instead of using I in the affirmation, just use the name of the person that you're praying for. Um, for example, uh, Marissa is in control. Marissa is the only authority in her life. Marissa is divinely protected by the light of her being. Marissa's aura and body of light are now closed off to the lower astral levels of mind and open to the spiritual world. Thank you, God, and so it is. Mm. 
Thank you, God. And so it is. What a beautiful command. Ah, so amazing. Marissa says, thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting with the affirmations is that I, I was taught a specific way to go through these powerful statements that really helped to re-imprint the brains. And it goes through different levels of the way that we open ourselves to receive. And so for the affirmations, it's almost like an alchemical process where first there's got to be a safety mechanism. If, if we don't feel safe in receiving, we're not going to receive. And then if we don't feel like we can deserve to receive a particular thing, it, there's the overcoming of the, the energy of deserving and getting into that space. And then after deserving, it's can you, can I, is it a possibility? And then actually being into a state of it. And from being in a state of it, the act of gratitude, the energy of gratitude for having been in receiving of it. Um, how important is it that we're conscious of those phases of it? Or is it through the repetition and the relationship with it, allowing it to evolve organically, that's really the most important thing? Most important thing is the repetition. Okay. Just continue to hammer. I mean, that sounds a little gross. Continue to hammer on it. Just continue and continue and continue. And the more you say it, the more it'll work for you. And I'm inspired to say an affirmation right now Beautiful. for everyone. It's called I am in charge. Well, it's not actually called I'm in charge. It's called prosperous self-determination. But I'm just going to read it from my, from my book, Prosperity Meditations. I am in charge of my destiny. I am the captain of my ship. I steer it to my highest good. I have the power to change course at any moment. No one creates my fate other than myself. No bad or good omen determines my fortune. I am 100% responsible for my destiny. I give no power to anything or anyone outside of me to create any negative experience for me. I am not a victim. I am a volunteer. Nothing ever happens to me. I only happen to myself. No person, place, or circumstance can possess me, hold me in chains or bondage, or prevent my good from coming to me. I belong to God and to myself alone. Through the power of free will, I now consciously make my own choices. I now consciously seize my own opportunities. I now consciously write my own script. I now consciously manifest my own good. I now make my own destiny, my own fate, my own future, and my own life. There is nothing beyond my grasp. If anyone can have it, I can. If anyone can do it, I can. If anyone can be it, I can. Through my faith in God, all is possible. Thank you, God, and so it is. Mm. Powerful. I just wanted to pause as we we're all receiving that. Thank you for bringing that up. That was, I could feel that running through. And then can y'all feel the potency? What you were saying reminded me of that affirmation. So I thought, oh, I've got to read that affirmation. Thank you. <laughs> so good. So everybody, it's, again, I'm, I want to ask Susan a question before we, we, we sign off this evening. And I'm so curious how you're going to answer. But the special offer, April, put the link for the special offer in the chat box one more time. We've gone through it. It's $97. It's a two payment option. It is powerful, powerful work. Um, and Susan is definitely an authority that it's that it's would benefit you from from being guided with um, through all the wisdom and different ways of sharing. It's just it's I'm so excited that this is something that we get to present to you here on the On the Ordinary Show. Um, so and don't forget the unlimited thinking exercises in this package as well. Where we talked about the surefire way to find out your true purpose why you're here, what your real mission is, that exercise is in this package. And you're going to discover what your true purpose and true mission is through doing this exercise, which you will find in a couple of places in this package. Oh, wonderful. That's so exciting. So Susan, you've been in this realm and leading and really a pioneer in the human potential movement back when they were calling the human potential movement right <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's it's really it's it's so impressive. Why do you keep doing what you do? What else could I do? I must do it. I must do what I'm what God has sent me to do. I must do it. It's just my nature. It's, my it's nature so is to help, is to teach, is to uh, empower uh, everyone to live their best life. And, you know, we have it all within us. Every one of us is a mighty, divine, powerful, spiritual being. And it's all right there within us. We just need a little encouragement, maybe a little screwdriver or a little bottle opener or some little thing to just help us to manifest that in our everyday life and that's what i'm here to do is to help people to do that yeah i love that i love that answer and and for me that also points to to a place that goes beyond the hope of what we're creating in this world it's it's really a knowing of we're awakening to not we're, we're diminishing into and and that again spoken from someone who's been so such a key influence for so many of us whether it was directly or indirectly because of what you've put in and how you've collaborated with others and shared through that collaboration that we're all benefiting from from right now so again what i see in your moving forward and and your purpose of sharing provide so much again it goes beyond hope it goes into a knowing and into an inspiration of truly the world that we're creating together knowing comes from experience mm. knowing comes from experience faith comes from experience trust comes from experience experience first and then you'll have the knowing then you'll have the trust then you'll be assured then you'll have the confidence experience this offer gives you the experience. This is an experiential offer. This is not intellectualization. This is real, practical experience. Mm -hmm. Everything that's in this offer is are things that you're going to interact. You're going to actually have the experience of it. You're not just going to read about it, think about it, intellectualize about it. You're going to have the direct experience that's what you need in order to truly change you must have experience just like vivekananda said so if there's a god we must see him if there's a soul we must perceive it otherwise why bother it better to be an outspoken atheist if you're not yeah. gonna have the direct experience this offer will help you to have the direct experience mm. ah so wonderful susan you're amazing thank you so much well, thank it's, you for inviting me, John. You're amazing. Uh, y'all, don't y'all just love Susan? I'm just like, I'm gonna leave this call just kind of like walking, you know, foot above the ground. Um, it seems like so wonderful. And all of y'all on the call, y'all are so wonderful, also, and the intentionality in your hearts and how we're doing this together, expanding each other, you know, hand in hand. It's so beautiful and such a gift to witness and get to participate and experience through you. So it's with that that I bow to each and every one of you and namaste. Send you all my love and I look forward to seeing you on the next call. Have a great evening.